While Moon Lord might be Terraria's final boss, it is by no means the hardest, as that title goes to the Empress of Light. This fairy-themed boss has two different forms with super strong attacks, with it even having the chance to instant kill a fully maxed out player. But if you do manage to defeat it, the loot more than makes up for the difficulty of this battle. That's why, in today's video, I'll be going over the easiest way to defeat the Empress of Light. Before we jump in, I want to clarify a few things. To start, I will be assuming you have access to endgame gear, like the Zenith and Rod of Harmony, and have your player fully upgraded. Next, this guide is more made for the Daylight form, but because the Daylight form is just a stronger version of the regular form, this guide will work for both easily. With that out of the way, let's begin. The first thing you need to know is how to summon the Empress of Light. While the Empress of Light can spawn at any time, the game will only count it as its daytime form if it happens between the times of 4.30 a.m. and 7.30 p.m., so keep that in mind moving forward. To actually get it to spawn, you will need to kill a Prismatic Lancewing, which will spawn in Hallow at night. And while it only spawns at night, you can always capture it and release it at any time you want to summon the boss. Now, we will take a look at the gear I recommend using. First off, I will be assuming your player is fully upgraded, including the player upgrades that you get from Shimmer, and the extra accessory slot you get from the Demon Heart. With that out of the way, let's move on to the gear. Starting with the armor, I usually use the Hallowed set, with the Hallowed Hood for the headpiece to give your minions more damage. But the Hallowed Mask will also work instead, since it increases melee damage. Moving on to the weapons, I had the best luck using the Zenith, along with the Xeno Staff. The Zenith works well here, with you having to move around a lot during this fight, and while other guides might recommend other summoning weapons, in my attempts, I always seem to do better with the Xeno Staff. For wings, I'd recommend the Fishron Mount, due to its speed, and for the mount, I'd recommend the Wing Slime Mount, for when you need to drop fast. And finally, for the accessories, I recommend using the Master Ninja for its dodge ability, the Necromantic Scroll and Papyrus Scarab for the extra minion slot and damage, the Brain of Confusion for its dodge effect, and the final two slots will depend on which form you're going up against. If you're going up against the Knight form, then I recommend using the Moon and Celestial Stone for all of their stat buffs. But if you are going up against the daytime form, I recommend the Soaring Insignia for its infinite flight ability, which will drop from the Empress of Light in expert mode, and the Sunstone for its stat buffs. And lastly, the Rod of Harmony can help save you when you're in tight situations, so I can't recommend having it enough. Next, let's look at what you will get for defeating it, since that makes this difficult battle worth it. To keep this section short, as I'm sure you already know the drops, I'll only go over the two that make this fight notable. The first is the Rainbow Cursor, which, just like its name implies, turns your cursor rainbow. Next, the Daytime Empress of Light will always drop the Terra Prisma, which is a summoned weapon that will summon swords that follow you and auto-attack nearby enemies. This weapon will deal 90 base damage, and is currently listed as the weapon with the highest damage per second. Although this weapon is amazing, getting it isn't too easy, since this boss has some of the strongest attacks in the game, which is what we'll be taking a look at next. The Daytime Empress of Light is similar to the regular form, but the big difference is it will be enraged, which will turn all of the moves color into yellow and cause them to instantly kill your player, even if it's fully upgraded. There are seven different attacks that the Empress of Light can use against you, which I'll be going over now. The first two moves are Prismatic Bolt and Prismatic Bolt 2, which will summon a cloud that shoots out lightning at your player. Her next attack is called Dash Attack, where she will zoom towards you in a horizontal direction. After that, her next move is the Sun Dance, in which she will hover near the player with eight rays that spin clockwise. The next move is the Everlasting Rainbow, which makes stars spinning clockwise shoot through you. And finally, the last two moves are Ethereal Lance 1 and 2, which will have flying swords summoned at the player's position to target and attack the player. The Empress of Light will use those moves in a specific order, which I have on screen now, and once she reaches her second phase, the moves she uses and the order they are used changes, which I have on the screen right now. 
Now that we know all of the attacks possible and how they will be used, let's get into what you will need to do in this fight. Before we start in this section, it's important to note that the strategy will essentially be the same for both forms, since the attacks really don't change between the two. While you will definitely need to go through it a few times before you get the hang of it, each of the moves can easily be cheesed in one way or another. The first move can easily be dodged by falling when you see the stars coming at you. The second move will be the Sunbeam move, which is easily avoidable and the perfect time to deal lots of damage. The next attack will be her dash, which is avoidable by constantly staying away from her, which you should be doing anyway. Her third attack will be the clockwise spinning stars, which can be avoided by flying in one direction for a good bit. And the final attack, before the loop starts over again, is the laser swords, which can be avoided by always moving out of the lines they spawn. At this point, you will most likely be on her second phase, which is a lot harder to explain since a lot's happening, but it's mostly the same strategies I just went over, just with the attacks being stronger and faster. The second phase is definitely what you will spend the most time on learning, since it's very easy to get caught in her attacks as so many happen so fast, but you will quickly realize it's almost the same each time, giving you the chance to easily memorize the movement patterns. That wraps up my guide on the easiest way to defeat both forms of the Empress of Light. While this is what ended up working for me, be sure to let me know in the comments the setups which work for you. Thanks for sticking to the end, and as always, make sure to have a wonderful day.